Hi, today, I'm going to explain the 7th and 8th episodes of the South Korean survival drama. If you want to watch the episode behind it, there is a link in the description of the video. The last episode ended with Ilnam and Ali dying while going against Gihun and Sangwoo. Respectively, Ali is put into a coffin by the staff while the players who won the game are taken back to the room. Deoksu walks into the room first and is surprised to see Min Yeo peacefully resting on her bed. She makes fun of him and is proud that she didn't have to play the game because she didn't get a partner. The most important aim of the game is for it to be fair. Since the doctor's death was the reason she didn't get a partner, Min Yeo was saved. Now, only 17 players are alive. In another room, the overseer gets a call from the VIPs informing him that they are about to arrive. After the call, the overseer gets his gun and asks Junho to come out. Junho had kept the phone's receiver the opposite way as opposed to how the overseer used to keep it, giving away his presence. The overseer goes around the room, looking for the intruder but gets a call in between. His staff has found a dead body on the north coast of the island. When he leaves, we see that Junho is hiding behind the shelves. Meanwhile, all the players are distressed because of the last game. All of them lost someone they were close to. Sangwoo, however, tells Gi-hun not to think about it too much because the old man was only a stranger who he had known for a few days. One of the players had come to the facility with his wife. Both of them were together in the last game, and his wife got killed because of him. He loses control and asks everyone to stop this madness by voting against the last two games. Sangwoo opposes and argues that the money is worth the lives of everyone who died, and they cannot give it up now. He even tells the man that if he feels so guilty, he should have died in his wife's place. Sangwoo has already shown his ruthless side by tricking Ali into dying, and now Gi-hun starts to realize how greedy his friend is. In the meantime, the overseer goes to see the body of the person Junho had thrown into the sea when he first came to the island. They find Junho's ID in the man's pocket and assume he is the police officer. But the overseer's demeanor changes when he sees the ID. Right then, he gets a call saying that the VIPs have arrived. The overseer quickly goes to meet his boss, who is the main man and the organizer of the games. He takes off his golden bedazzled animal mask and asks the overseer to receive the VIPs because he doesn't want to be the one to welcome them. The VIPs turn out to be some rich foreigners who bet on the player's life as people do with horses. They are received by the overseer, who apologizes on behalf of the organizer and takes them to their exclusive lounge. Meanwhile, in the room, no one sleeps at night with the fear of being killed. The man whose wife died is filled with unbearable guilt. He remembers Sangwoo telling him to die and ties the bedsheet around his neck. The man finally hangs himself on the bunk bed. One of the VIPs sees this in the surveillance footage and gets annoyed because he had bet $1 million on the man. The others laugh it off, showing that money is the least of their problems. And they do this for fun. Simultaneously, Junho abducts a waiter appointed to serve the VIPs with drinks. He changes his clothes and disguises himself as the waiter after killing him. He also places his phone on his sleeves to record everything he sees. Meanwhile, the players are woken up by an alarm and see a coffin being brought inside. They finally see that the man has hung himself. Before they can comprehend what happened, they are called for the fifth game. The VIPs rest in the lavish lounge while watching the players and deciding who they should bet on. Junho enters the place, and a perverted VIP's eyes land on him. He calls Junho near and asks him to stand nearby. This time, the players are brought to the empty white room again, but this time, it has 16 mannequins placed in front of them. They are told to choose one randomly. Everyone tries going for the middle ones because being at the front or back is risky. Before Gi-hun can choose one, only the first and the last ones are left. Gi-hun reasons that if he goes first, he might have more time left and a better chance at winning. He is about to take the first one. When another player asks him if he can be the first one, Gi-hun accepts and takes the very last one instead. They are then brought to the place where they will be playing the game. It has a bridge of glasses which they are supposed to cross. but. Some of the glasses are tempered, so they will break when the player steps on them. Making the person fall. The man who took the first place has to go first and has a higher chance of winning. The person in the first accepts his fate and moves forward but falls to his doom. On the second step. Similarly, the second man steps forward who jumps quickly on the first. Few glasses but eventually falls. After some time, it is the priest's turn to move forward. He starts praying to God instead of moving, angering the people behind him. The person right behind him 
tries to push him off but instead falls off the glass himself. The priest, thanks God for saving him only to be pushed by the person behind him. Sang Wu is nervous because they are taking a lot of time to cross, which might cause him, Sabiak, and Gi Hun to not get there in time. Eventually, the person before Diaxu falls off, leaving him in the front. He is too scared to move ahead himself. So he tells his minion behind him to go forward. The man, however, doesn't agree, saying that this is a matter of life and death. Meanwhile, the VIP who is attracted to Junho now asks him to sit beside him. He flirts with Junho and asks him to take the mask off. Junho knows if he takes it off, this secret will be revealed. But the VIP keeps on insisting. With no way out, he asks the man to come to the other room where he can take his mask off. The man totally ignores the game and goes to the other room with Junho. He then takes off his robe and stands naked in front of Junho, expecting sexual favors from him. Junho, however, gets his gun out and threatens the man to take his mask off. He turns out to be a wealthy middle-aged American. Man. Junho takes his picture as evidence. Back in the game, Minyeo pushes Diaxu's minion off the glass and takes his place. She and Diaxu throw insults at each other before she agrees to go before him. She doesn't want him to waste her time because only three minutes are left. She asks him to move and steps on his glass, but instead of moving forward, takes a tight hold of him. Minyeo reminds Diaxu of when she threatened to kill him if he betrayed her. Diaxu tries to get her off him but he cannot make a lot of movement in the glass. At last, she deliberately falls off the bridge taking Diaxu with her. Now only four of the players are left, Gihan at the end, then Sabiak, Sangwu, and at the front is an old man who claims to be a glassmaker with 30 years of experience. The man can tell the difference between the glasses by looking at the reflection. He easily passes the first few glasses taking the group closer to victory. But the VIPs realize he can tell the glasses apart and turn the lights off. He is now at the last glass but cannot tell which is the tempered one. When he takes more time, Sangwu takes the matter into his hands and pushes the man to the glass in front of him. The glass breaks. And Sangwu easily steps onto another one and wins the round. Sabiak and Gihan do the same. And pass at the last second. The remaining glasses automatically shatter into pieces. Injuring the winners as well. Sangwu and Gihan get minor cuts, but Sabiak is gravely hurt. Meanwhile, the overseer asks a staff member to see what is going on with the VIP and the waiter. But they find both of them missing. The staff also find one oxygen tank missing, indicating that the intruder has escaped. The overseer gets on a boat himself to go on a search for him. Sangwu, Sabiak, and Gihan are the only three left out of the 456 players who first arrived. They are taken back to the room where Gihan belittles Sangwu for killing the man when they could have all made it through. Sangwu, in turn, tells him to be grateful that he was there to do the dirty work for him. He calls Gihan an idiot who doesn't know how real life works. Sabiak, on the other hand, stays on the bed holding her sides. As the two fight, the staff come into the room and congratulate them for getting through the five rounds and finally making it to the sixth. They hand the players one box each and invite them somewhere special. Sabiak goes to the washroom and takes her clothes off to reveal a glass stab to her abdomen. She painfully takes it out and bandages the wound with her shirt. The box given by the staff has fancy clothes inside which the players are supposed to wear. The players are then brought to a triangular dining table and given a lavish dinner. The guys devour it completely except for Sabiak, who barely even touches the food because of her injury. After they are done, the staff take their utensils away but leave them with a knife. Meanwhile, Junho is on the run from the overseer and ends up on another side of the island. His phone finally gets reception, and he sends his superior the pictures he had taken in the facility. But before he can run away, the staff and the overseer catch up to him. Now, he lies in between the staff and a cliff and has no way out of the situation. The overseer asks him to drop his gun, but Junho stays put in his place. The overseer doesn't back up either. Instead, he moves towards the policeman which makes Junho shoot him on his shoulder. At that moment, the overseer finally takes his mask off. Looking at his face, Junho freezes in shock. The overseer is Junho's brother in Ho, the man Junho was looking for all this time. In Ho points his gun at his little brother and reluctantly shoots him. Junho eventually falls into the sea and dies. Back in the facility, the trio comes back to the room and stays in their respective corner. As far away from each other as possible. Gihan approaches Sabiak and asks her if she is okay. Sabiak points her knife at him at first but puts it back when he says he isn't there to hurt her. 
Di Han asks her to work together with him in the following round because he doesn't trust Sang Woo. Anymore, Se Biak, still in pain, asks him what he will do if he wins the money. Gi Han says he will pay off his debts, treat his mother and be a good father to his daughter. Se Biak tells him about her own brother. The two promise to take care of each other's families if they win the money. Then, Gi Han sees Sang Woo falling asleep on his bed. He moves towards him with his knife. But Se E Biak stops him. saying that they should not go down to his level just then gi hun notices sebiak's injury she is bleeding profusely through her shirt gi hun freaks out and starts yelling at the staff to come in and save her as he bangs on the door some staff come in but they have a coffin with them gi hun looks back at sebiak only to find sang woo near her with a knife he had stabbed her to death while gi hun was begging the staff to save her gi hun loses control and shakes sebiak's limp body trying to wake her He attacks Sang Woo in a fit of rage but is stopped by the guard. Eventually, they take Se Biak's body away and burn it in the furnace. The two final contestants of the game are Gi Han and Sang Woo. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.